This video is for you who are interested in the GIS and Remote Sensing Masters program at Lund University at the Department of Physical, Geography and Ecosystem Science. I'm Elias, a first year student and an ambassador for the program. I'd like to give you an idea of what it's like to study here. Specifically, we will visit this place, the GIS Center at our department, and talk to our program coordinator. Additionally, we will hear some thoughts from current students. I hope you will find it informative. My name is Ali Mansourian. I am a professor of geomatics at the Department of Physical Geography and Ecosystem Science at Lund University. I am also director of Lund University GIS Center and coordinator of the GIS and Remote Sensing Master Program at the department. Actually, GIS and Remote Sensing, let's call it geomatics, is a nice combination of uh, science and technology. You study geospatial information science and at the same time, uh, programming, uh, AI, database, uh, 3D technologies. It's ex exciting to study a wide range of interesting technologies. Uh, you, you learn a lot. They are still connected to each other. And at the same time, for your future career, you can select uh, the direction that you like most. Uh, this was one of the reasons that uh, I selected uh, GIS and Remote Sensing. There is also another reason that uh, geomatics is a growing industry and uh, it has been synced or connected to other technologies such as artificial intelligence, space technology and information communication technology. It means that the job market will be growing and there is opportunities to finding job. Uh, for myself, it's fun to work in interdisciplinary areas. You meet uh, other research groups or other people who are working in other disciplines. You work with other groups of people and you learn from them about their disciplines. For example, when you work with health people, you also learn a little bit about health and what they are doing. When you work with uh, forestry people, you learn from them about forestry. It's interesting, you get new uh, type of knowledge and skills when you work for them. So due to these reasons, I found uh, GIS and remote sensing as an interesting area to study. Hi, I'm Sophie, and my main motivation to enter the field of GIS and remote sensing was actually my remote sensing teacher, and also that I wrote my bachelor thesis in collaboration with a company, and I was working with hyperspectral imagery, and that really much motivated and brought me deeper into the field of remote sensing. Hi, I'm Xiaoyu. I'm motivated to enter the GIS field because of the broad career path. For example, you can go for field work and uh, manipulate satellite images, and or you can just uh, analyze the spatial data to find the patterns beneath them. Besides, I'm really, really interested in uh, integrating the uh, geospatial data with uh, software development and some web applications. Hello, my name is Gabriel, and uh, the reason what motivated me for studying remote sensing in GIS was I was in my last year of studies and I started taking courses in GIS. I find a very big, I found a very big interest in working with the geospatial data. Hi, my name is Jay, and my bachelor background is geographical information science. During my bachelor studies, I made a lot of uh, beautiful maps and uh, uh, I could see what happened uh, on the ground from satellite remote sensing image, which is very interesting for me. So that is why I came into the field of GIS and remote sensing. Uh, hi, I'm Luca and uh, my main motivation was coming through the GIS courses I had in my bachelors. Uh, I had a geography bachelor and uh, those courses felt most rewarding to me. And also additionally, uh, the job market is uh, really good when you do this master and I'm looking forward to it. The vision of the program is to empower future GIS and remote sensing professionals. We want to train students with advanced GIS and remote sensing knowledge and skills, preparing them to be leaders, innovators and problem solvers in the rapidly developing geospatial information industry. 
Uh, that's an interesting question, actually, because uh, we have recently revised the JS and Remote Sensing Master program. So uh, I have a refreshed mind about uh, not challenges, but the main criteria that we had to consider to design this program properly. Uh, one of the issues that we thought about was that uh, our program is very popular among international students. And when you get the students from all around the world, usually they have different levels of uh, knowledge and skill. So we have to design the program in a way that to make sure all the students will reach to a certain level of knowledge and skills in the first half semester of the program. And we could do that by introducing some uh, courses that has uh, programming components and basic JS components to make sure that uh, students can reach to a level to be able to study advanced courses uh, during the program uh, smoothly. Uh, another criteria that we had to consider was uh, to have a good balance between theory and practice. Uh, we don't want to teach uh, students only facts and, uh, and lectures about what is GIS, what is remote sensing, and things like that. We want them to practice. So we could design for each lecture, for each piece of lecture, some exercises linked to real world scenarios by which students can experience or become familiarized with the application areas of the theories and techniques that they have learned. They should indeed have a general GIS and remote sensing knowledge, but we also want them to have uh, advanced GIS and S skills related to GIS and remote sensing. Uh, they should be able to work with geographical databases. They should be able to do programming, GIS programming, both uh, desktop and web-based. Uh, we want them to be able to develop web-based uh, GIS services. They should be able to create 3D models and work with 3D data. And last but not least, we want them to have a good background knowledge and uh, skills about artificial intelligence and use AI techniques to solve uh, complicated uh, special problems uh, to apply artificial intelligence in GIS and remote sensing. These are the main areas that we wish uh, students uh, to gain by studying this program. So I didn't come here with a specific set of skills I want to gain. I was looking forward to gain a more broader uh, idea of JS and remote sensing. But uh, I'm looking really forward to the GIS uh, 3D animation course we have. And uh, also I think in two weeks we have a drone class, which I'm really excited about. Initially, before I started my master's degree in Lund University, I wanted to improve my programming skills in the field of GIS and remote sensing. And based on the course structures, we have a lot of technical course like Python programming and uh, spatial analysis, also spatial database. Uh, those I was very interested in and I participate in this course, I learned a lot from them. I think the primary skill I want to learn and maintain is programming. I've had programming courses before, but I have never been introduced to Python and I want to maintain this and I want to be able to apply it outside of in the working environment. I'd like to learn more about the programming languages regarding the GIS field. In fact, we have already learned about Python, the ArcPy, the R language, and the Postgres Circle uh, for the first year of our program. And to be specific, I like to learn more about the software or web ap application development languages in the following year. From the program, I would like to gain skills mainly in programming, but also in like exploring the different softwares available for GIS applications. And, um, but yeah, main focus on programming and, and of course also remote sensing software. Uh, the last semester of uh, the program or the study have been dedicated for uh, master thesis. It usually starts in uh, January and uh, students are expected to present in uh, June. So they have about five months uh, to write their thesis. Uh, it's the student who selects the topic and uh, the supervisor, but also supervisor should also accept. But in order to facilitate the matchmaking between uh, students and supervisors, uh, the department has created a web page 
where supervisors upload uh, the topic of their interest. Then uh, students can read the topics. If they find a topic which is interesting for them, they contact related supervisor and start a discussion. It may also happen that uh, students have their own ideas, then they can discuss uh, the idea with the uh, related supervisors who have closer research direction to that idea and uh, start a discussion if it could be a good topic uh, for their thesis. Uh, the process of uh, selecting the topic usually starts in November. So we can say in around November, December, uh, students uh, start uh, talking about uh, topics, contacting supervisors, discussing with them, and in January, it is expected that the study plan is ready and the actual work starts. Yes, indeed, we have a student advisor at the department who can help a student with selecting courses, course plan, and even internship. Uh, related to internship, as you may know, students can decide or select to a, to a company or organization uh, for a semester instead of uh, studying elective courses. Uh, finding companies is uh, on a student side actually for the internship but the uh, department has connection and means uh, to support the students for example recommend them uh, companies or contact companies to facilitate uh, finding a good place uh, to do internship uh, that, that's an interesting question and very important one. Uh, we try to act, at least introduce uh, students to the uh, work environment or possible life or career life that they can have uh, after their graduation. Uh, in order to do that, we have uh, different mechanisms. Uh, for example, in one of the uh, one of the courses, there is a lecture that uh, students are given information about uh, possible job opportunities, the experience of uh, alumni in finding job, and things like that. Uh, sometimes we invite guest lecturers from uh, from other disciplines or from industry to give a related lecture uh, about the course, but from other perspectives, and also to describe to the students how the techniques uh, that uh, they study is uh, being used in practice in industry. Uh, Internship is of course one of also those mechanisms that uh, connects uh, students to the world outside uh, academia and outside university. We also encourage uh, students to participate in seminars or workshops that take place in the department or in the university just uh, to become uh, familiar with uh, other aspects of uh, GIS and remote sensing research and education or how they can be used in other disciplines. So these are the mechanisms that uh, we have already implemented but uh, I believe that it needs uh, to be improved and uh, we are working on that in the department. Final words. Uh, yes, maybe I can tell the students that uh, Lund is a nice city. It has a student life. Uh, it's warm welcoming students from all around the world. It's not as cold as uh, North Pole, so don't be afraid about the cold in this city. Uh, if you come to Lund University, select GS and Remote Sensing Master program. That's a good program. Yeah. So that was that. You have now heard the perspective of different students and the program coordinator. Personally, I find that this program offers a great many technical skills, as well as an opportunity to focus on the thematic depth during my master thesis. Thank you for tuning in.